the biggest thing that people shouldn't be afraid of is failure in your 20s. Hello everyone, everyone, we are here with a legend, Matt Berkey. First question for you, Matt. We're curious about your Solve for Why Academy. We're hoping you could explain your goals with that and how people can get involved. Sure, I guess I'll start with how it began. So in 2016, I had been playing high stakes for probably four or five years at that point. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people who plateaued. Guys that I was grinding with at the 25510 stakes were still at the 25510 stakes while I'm playing 61200. And it made me feel like there was just a niche opportunity there to kind of provide a template of sorts for people to kind of get over plateaus. It's evolved a ton since then. Obviously the training space has become heavily competitive. It's not just run at once anymore. And with the more that we learn about game theory, there's a bigger overlap now between live, online, and all realms. I think the big element that we try to push now is just a framework for problem solving. To be fair, like that's what GTO was meant to illustrate, right? It's like, here's a template for how to problem solve better. But I just think the branding of it all was very poorly done. It was more of just like the idea of here's a single strategy that you can follow and you'll auto win. And that's just not true now that people are becoming a little smarter. So how can people best get involved in Solve for Why Academy? The Academy is unique. So it's a three day immersive experience. It's kind of like, I, I compare it a little bit to a fantasy camp Okay. where you know, the end goal is to learn rather Poker than- Poker camp sounds pretty fun to me. <laughs> yeah, but you know, because it's three days and because it's so intensive, we're playing on these RFID tables or the big production and everything else, it's a high price point. So I don't by any stretch of the imagination think that it's for anyone. For most people who come, this is like an experience. But for anybody interested, we run people through a vetting process and you can find that questionnaire at selfwellacademy.com. So kind of next question I want to talk to Matt about as it's come up recently in my life. I got a call from my mom two days ago and basically she was concerned that I'm becoming a Degenerate. Sure. People watch us and they think that poker is all that we do and it really isn't. So how can we explain as young poker players to people that like our parents who'd be concerned how it's not just gambling? Yeah, I think it's really valid. It's a difficult conversation to have because they're speaking from a point of experience where they've seen the horror stories. But the truth of the matter is that any career you pursue comes with a ton of risk. Now that risk may just be time insecurity when it comes to like job status and things like that, especially in today's day and age where a lot's being automated. You know, it's pe people don't hold careers any longer for a lifetime. It's more like every yeah. seven years you're, you're recycling and moving on. So I think the way to frame this conversation with your parents is that you're in your twenties and you are as versatile and resilient as you'll ever be in your lifetime. In other words, you have no overhead. Yeah. When you fail, you didn't lose that much, right? Mm -hmm. If your net worth is 5k and you go broke, it's meaningless. You'll make $5,000 hundreds and hundreds of times in your lifetime. So it doesn't really matter that much. You're never gonna be homeless because you have a good support system. You also have this fallback of a good education. You're interning for it. So it's like you're, you're creating this opportunity moving forward. And gaps in resume aren't really a big concern any longer the way they were 20 years ago. Yeah. A lot of people just take time to either work for themselves or to travel or to see the world, whatever. And I think the biggest thing that people shouldn't be afraid of is failure in your 20s because you need that resiliency going into your 30s and 40s whenever you are pursuing a more secure path. So take all the risk now. Take, take the pathways that are a little bit more insecure that can potentially help you down the line. And the thing is, I'm not encouraging you to pursue poker as a full-time career necessarily, but more so that like poker is such a great sandbox for life. Mm -hmm, you just yeah. get to kind of like play around and understand the world differently through a lens of problem solving, both at the macro and micro level. Yeah. And the more refined you become with that, especially like as an engineer where you have a mathematical background to begin with, the more intimate you become with risk and with understanding what's worth pursuing and what's not. So basically, Matt, what you're saying is it is okay to take the risk. You have a broad horizon. So, yep. so there are backup plans put in place in case you do go broke. Right, like the way I'd like to compare it is, so imagine that you were, you got good at cutting hair in college, okay. right? Like it's something that all college kids go through. You don't want to pay for a barber. So somebody on campus ends up being like a decent barber. Imagine you're good at that, right? And you go to your parents and you say, hey, I have this idea for a side business I want to start. I'm going to open a weekend barber shop. It's going to cost me $5,000 to fund. What do you think? They're going to pat you on the back and say, great job for being entrepreneur, right? But you're going to fail. You're going to fail like 98% of the time as this weekend barber because it's a super saturated market. You're not doing any market research. You don't really have that tangible of a skill. You don't have a lot of funding behind it. There's no marketing. You got all the reasons that small businesses fail. Yeah. You're very likely to fail. 
And they're just going to say like, great, that's a life lesson. Now you understand the failure behind small poker is the exact same thing. You've studied to a certain point where you've acquired a certain skill set that should be plus EV, assuming you apply the strategy correctly. Yeah. And if that's true, then maybe you grow that 5,000 into uh, some sort of like seed for something bigger down the line. Maybe it's a poker career. Maybe it's a different business venture, right? Yeah. It's the fact that it's the vehicle of poker that people don't like. Exactly. That there's some sort of like gambling element to it, where in reality, it's like everything we do in life is a gamble. It's just calculated risk. Wow. That's a really interesting point. I've never really thought about it like that. So kind of piggybacking off of that question, how did you become a pro poker player? What kind of things did you have to give up? Did you have to totally. quit a job, drop out of college? Yeah, I guess it was a little different for me because it, it was different in both a good and bad way. It was a good way in the sense that there was never an easier time to make money in the game. Mm -hmm. But it was bad in the sense that there was no framework for doing so. So I didn't yeah. see this as a startup mm -hmm. at 22 years old or 21 years old, whatever. I just saw it as a game that I was seemingly good at that could pay my bills. And for me, it wasn't really a lot of risk. I was pursuing a professional baseball career with all my heart, even though my skills didn't necessarily align there. So what was I giving up? Pursuing computer science, which was a field I hated. You know, having security in my career, which I don't care about. Like I've just always operated pretty well under chaos. I think I had a luxury of growing up very poor. So I didn't really worry about the worst case scenario. I kind of like intrinsically understood that in your 20s, there was nothing I could do that could fail outside of like doing something that put my life in danger, right? Yeah. So yeah, it was just like a lot of figuring things out on the fly, learning as I went, and understanding that the further and further away I was from college and my degree, and the more independence that I acquired through this path, the harder it was gonna be to go back. But that's really what right. spun me off into creating a business and being more entrepreneurial. It wasn't necessarily a, a, a detractor in the sense that like, oh, well, now he has this computer science degree that he's never going to use. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I really like the point that he's made. Find something you're passionate about. It's the biggest thing. Matt, you couldn't have done this, would you say, if you weren't passionate about it? No, for sure. And, and I mean, that's going to be of almost all career paths. For the majority of people, it's difficult to just slap a label to who you are and what you're supposed to do in your career. Yeah. Because it's not the industrial revolution anymore, right? Like you don't just have leaders and followers, yeah. worker bees and CEOs. Now all of a sudden everybody's trying to like carve out some sort of niche in the world and offer value back in order to get paid. So maybe you don't make it as a poker player. Maybe you don't make it as a vlogger. Maybe none of this happens, but I bet your interviewing skills get better. Yeah. I bet you get more comfortable talking in front of people, on camera, in groups, whatever the case may be. These intangibles that you acquire along the way are going to pay off dividends whenever you finally do settle on a passion that you want to pursue. I really think what Matt is really saying is that, you know, there are risks involved in what in poker and there are risks involved in starting anything new, but you're going to gain skills along the way, connections along the way that might just bring you to something new. Yeah. And, and you probably didn't think it solved for why. I mean, that, that I, I didn't, this wasn't anything I wanted to do in my twenties. And like, you don't know what 30 year old you want to do or 40 or 50 or whatever. You just like keep following the path. So, so mom, it, it might not be pro poker for me, but I'm putting all my marbles into stuff that I like and that's math and that's this channel. So I'm gonna keep going with it. And I encourage all of you guys, take your risk. That's what Matt's saying. I don't think he would be here today if he didn't take any risks. So. True. Well, Matt, thank you very much for your time. This was a great interview. And I feel like I learned a lot, even just from this interview. So make sure to check out solve for why academy.com. Yeah, thank you very much for your time here. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you.